Well, hello there, folks. I asked you guys if you'd like to see a South African campaign let's play here in the Border War, and you guys said yes. We're going to jump right in here with the first mission, guys. We are playing as the South African Republic, um, and of course, we want to go for a total victory. Now, over the years, we are actually giving aid to UNITA. This is a political group within Angola, uh, which essentially, for lack of a better word, uh, and for lack of, of much longer explanation, uh, supports our interests pretty much in this part of the world. Uh, that being said, what we want to do is try and get UNITA in power, but currently the Marxist MPLA is actually in power in Angola, and that's not good for us. It's not something we want. So we want to try and put an end to that, and that's essentially what this campaign is all about. We're going to be fighting with UNITA troops, we're going to be fighting with South African troops against the Angolan rebels, and they're actually also going to have Cuban support uh, in the form of commandos, commanders, etc. So guys, here we go. The campaign is beginning right now. I hope we get the first attack. It looks like the first actual um, point of contention is going to be right there in the north. So I'm going to immediately try and get some units closer here to see if I can't push on that particular location. There's actually a much smaller point of contention right there, but you bet I'm going for it. And I'm going to try to join uh, the attack here with another unit. Now, another thing we could potentially do is send our infantry in for this attack, but I think this is pretty risky. So I'm just going to try to keep my infantry and the rest of these units uh, fairly close to these guys right here. Okay, I believe that's all I want to do. I want to move my leader here. And we've also got some Unita units down here that we'll eventually probably have to support. Let's go ahead and end the turn, folks. And it looks like our first battle All is going right, to take place folks, here. It looks like Let's the jump in and see what we're facing. Commenced. Uh, we are going to be moving on to a village that is suspected of having, of course, sympathies to the MPLA. But first, what we have to do is set up our forces. And I'm pretty certain about where I want to go here. Uh, what I'm going to do is just basically do a concentric attack from all sides. Uh, again, we've got our rattles. Um, excuse me, our rattles. Uh, these are the South African, um, essentially, assault vehicles. Uh, very, very effective as uh, as assault vehicles. And we're just basically going to do one massive attack towards the village. So I'm assuming that this is going to be absolutely insane. Uh, generally, we'd be more tactical about this, but I'm not too concerned about what the MPLA has. So I'm actually going to go for an assault, guys. Um, this is probably one of the most major attacks we can do. We also have some howitzer support fire uh, that we could probably bring in, but I don't even know that we're going to need that. Uh, we'll take a look here at our boys, of course. Oh my goodness, right away. Uh, looks like we're taking hits. Could that potentially have been uh, a mortar? I don't know. Well, whatever whatever the case, it looks like our guys are popping some smoke. Uh, and actually, maybe I will stay here. Yep, yeah, sure enough, we've made contact uh, with MPLA forces almost immediately in this battle, guys. My goodness, talk about a lively fight. Let's go ahead. Let's stop right here. Uh, and it looks like our, our enemy forces are directly ahead of us. Come on, lads. Kill them all. We can do this. We can do this. My goodness, they're all over the village, guys. Again, we want to stop our forces. We've got a lot of infantry here firing as well. We definitely got uh, an absolutely first taste of the enemy forces here. Keep it up. Looks like we're getting some pretty good hits on them. Nice! Excellent hits. Uh, and, of course, we want to just waste these vehicles before they become a threat at all. The amount of firepower going into this first battle is insane, guys. I didn't expect this one bit. All right, let's send Lou over there. He pretty much knows what he's shooting at. Let's take a look here at the MPLA vehicles. It's even hard to see them as they retreat here. It looks like we're, yeah, we're definitely hitting them in the back. Uh, but I'm not sure if our rounds, our machine gun rounds specifically, can pop through this thing. Nonetheless, I think the overwhelming amount of firepower here is going to lead us to a victory for sure. Just don't want to come out of this with too many casualties. Uh, considering the fact that we're already doing pretty damn well against these guys. Yeah, let's keep the attack over here. It looks like those units are trying to escape the village. And we want no one escaping here. We don't want MPLA units escaping to fight us later. Come on, boys. You can shoot better than that. 
you're from South Africa, you have to know how to shoot my terrible South African accent. I love, I, I love the South African accent, but it's one of the toughest to do, at least for me. Oh, oh, just missed. Look at that, guys. Just missing, and we definitely have more here. Uh, more enemies right there on the line. It looks like we took out one of them already, but we've got to keep the attack going. You know what? We can't stop. we got to keep on going. Looks like actually the assault is working better than just staying put. Keep it up, boys. Just amazing, guys. I am so happy to have been able to show you guys this fight. Um, just an amazing start to the campaign. I don't know where it's going to go from here, and I don't even know how long it's going to last. Uh, but, of course, this is one of the minor objective points we have to take, this village. Um, kind of on the border. And I think we are doing an okay job so far. You know what? Darby Lewis, I think we actually will stop right here. Uh, he can already spot one of the enemies. I'll do the same with this vehicle. And I essentially just want to target those guys right there on the edge. Alright, look at how close we're getting with some of these units. Uh, at this point we can stop. I mean, we're so close to the enemy, why not? The village is essentially in our hands. Uh, and it looks like we've actually got some captives taken. I didn't even notice this, guys. Look at this. Uh, enemy units surrendering. And these are Cuban units, for sure. Uh, we can tell. They actually look like Cuban units here. Uh, what other captives have we taken? Some more Cuban units deciding to give up here. Oh, actually, these are purely MPLA units. Um, now, it's quite typical for Cuban units to be assisting, of course, the, uh, the MPLA here. Um... And quite interesting that they're going to be surrendering. We'll have to question them later, see what information they have about the MPLA. We've also got some enemies attacking us over there, and it looks like potentially a tank attack. Yeah, I want to go towards that and get rid of it. One cool thing about these rattles is they are equipped with guns capable of knocking out uh, enemy tanks. Uh, the problem is they don't have armor as strong as those tanks, but they can still put a hurting on the enemy. Let's go, boys. Come on. Here we go. First shot. Look at that. Streaking across. Doesn't look like that's going to hit them. But they definitely have tanks here. That's a hit. Really nice one right on the side. Fortunately, it led to a vehicle loss on our side as we were waiting. But I think that tank is a goner. And I'll trade uh, an APC for a tank any day. There we go. She's gone. Good shooting, boys. One MPLA tank that will not be bothering us in the future. But the village remains under MPLA control. Sub Zulfabar here. You could also see uh, those little flags. Those are all um, essentially MPLA commanders, uh, potentially Cubans as well. And we want to waste them. Uh, the last thing that the enemy needs is a strong officer class. We want to get rid of those officer classes so in the future, the men don't even know what they're doing. And hopefully by killing these officers, that's exactly what's going to occur. They're just going to lose all leadership potential. It's amazing how our boys are actually outside of the vehicle here as well on those machine guns, prepared to fight. You guys bring it out. Oh, it's the mortar, guys. Unbelievable. So this mortar travels inside this vehicle they've got an amazing actual hatch here uh, to still be able to use the mortar against any of the enemies i think that's just incredible and you can see the mortar striking already where those officers are look at all those dead mpla troops Colder. Just want to focusing on that one guy. Now it's truly uh, up close and personal combat. 
I mean, some of our guys are inches away from the enemy. Look at our uh, South African troop there throwing the grenade. Things are very dangerous here for our men. We have got to break through. And, of course, killing that officer is absolutely a goal. We got our troop there. We have plenty more units. It's just a shame to see one of our guys go down there. So close to the end of the battle as well. This vehicle is very close to enemy units. They don't seem to be spotting uh, the few officers. There. there we go. We finally spotted them. Definitely opening fire on that position. That's what we want to see, son. Keep it up. We just keep that. This is essentially a mobile machine gun position and kill any uh, enemy infantry in the area. Look at that. Looks like either the enemy had a secondary line of defense or uh, they're simply retreating. I mean, look how close some of our vehicles are to theirs. This is just incredible. <laughs> I've never seen this before. We're still going to try to take them out, but... Yeah, he's right there next to our guy. Come on now. Turn that gun around and fire. Full South Africa. Kill him. Oh, my goodness. Nasty shot there. That could absolutely have killed our vehicle. Looks like some sort of heat-seeking missile. And enemies asking for a ceasefire. No way am I accepting that ceasefire. There's just no way, guys. There's another shot there. You can see the heat missile streaking across. We just can't accept the ceasefire right now. Um, we've got to take this village at the very least. This is a very short campaign. So, you know, we've got a lot to do in a very small amount of time. And again, I will only consider that ceasefire if we take the village. But even then, I I'm not so sure it's a good idea. I mean, just look at all these machine gun rounds, uh, these tracer rounds, flying towards the existing enemy positions. I think they are in full retreat. But let me know what you guys think we should have done here um, in the comments, guys. Love to see our infantry also over here firing away. Keep up the fire. And there we go, Calder still firing those heat missiles. But we still got this kind of annoying enemy vehicle here. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, I'm going to try to knock him out, guys. So far, though, as evidenced by just all the smoke coming up from this village, we have knocked out so many enemy vehicles. Some of them just completely on fire here. Um, not coming back. Some of them, of course, just abandoned. But overall, I think we've done really, really well. As you can see, we are properly in the village here with some infantry. Uh, this is the way we want it. And actually, it looks like only the eastern part of the village. We still have to take the rest here, but uh, we're finally targeting the enemy positions right here. Calder was ordered to move forward. He's doing just that, but he's still not targeting uh, that guy. Kind of frustrating once again. Okay, we finally took the key point, guys. It took us long enough, but the key point is officially ours. Uh, I think just with the overwhelming amount of units we have in this area, yeah, the enemy can't deny that this is our area. Once again, another unit down here. And potentially, this whole defending force was uh, Cuban troops. I really believe that. I think this was almost entirely um, taken by the Cuban troops. We're just backing up a bit, guys, to see the, um, the actual battlefield from a different perspective here. And, of course, it's going just great for us. A 
few unlucky vehicles here, of course. And you can see, I mean, our drivers did not come out of this uh, unscathed. We had a few losses, but I mean, considering how many targets we took out there, guys, I think that was a fair trade-off. Of course, we'll really be able to tell once we get to the casualties at the end of the battle whether or not this was a good idea or not. Um, but nonetheless, we had to move forward. And the whole goal here is to try to get to Luanda, Angola, um, which is the capital, before the MPLA are able to establish an appropriate government. Right now, they're in that transition, transitional stage, uh, and that's why we're trying to put UNITA in power um, to, let's be honest, forward our own interests in the region. Come on, Calder. You can shoot him now. Come on. Nice to see the gunner on top firing, though. It looks like Calder's finally taking aim there. Can you get a kill for us, son? Come on, please. At least the machine gunner's firing in the direction of the enemy. <laughs> Get some enemy contact once again. Yeah, it's just going to be some more enemy APCs uh, staking out the region. Alright, still a few uh, enemy infantry also, guys, um, over here in town. Guess they didn't have a chance to escape. It could also be vehicle crew, but it doesn't look like vehicle crew to me. more officers over there uh, on the outskirts of town as well. They thought they were going to get away, but we just cannot allow that. I can't believe Calder is getting shot at at this point. Man, this whole area, this whole village uh, has just been bombarded um, almost unrecognizably. Uh, you can actually see some of the buildings knocked down here. And if you just go back to the first part of this battle when it first began, this looked like a peaceful, nice, happy village on the edge. Um, but now it's truly on the edge, and just on the edge of utter annihilation. I think the people of this village also wouldn't be happy with a ceasefire because they probably want to side to take this, just establish their control here so they can start building up again. Uh, or rebuilding, I should say. More captives taken. Unbelievable. Uh, but hey, more prisoners is always good for me. And also more people that we can question later at headquarters uh, to find out the rest of these uh, MPLA positions, guys. But once again, I don't see a reason to accept the ceasefire simply because we are just overwhelmingly winning this battle. I'm sure we've had some significant losses, and we've definitely lost some vehicles. Uh, there's a lot of infantry here now. Um, but not everybody. We've still got plenty of vehicles on the way. Mop it up. So the white ones there represent the ones we can actually see. Um, and yeah, at this distance, and even and especially with like sort of these jungles in the way, like these smaller jungles, uh, it is pretty hard to, to spot what the hell is going on um, all the way over there in the distance. Radabee's trying to see, but actually this guy might not have a gun strong enough to uh, take that thing out. 
And that is leading me to believe that, yeah, it wouldn't be such a bad idea to accept a ceasefire now, because I don't want to be losing, um, you know, APCs and just, or rattles specifically, in just silly situations. Um, you know, we've beaten the main force of the enemy, we've crushed a bunch of their vehicles, uh, and if their vehicles at a distance can still get kills on us, that might not be such a good thing. Uh, maybe it's best to accept the ceasefire and go after them in a more open scenario where, once again, they're defending and they're not in a position where they're literally just retreating in front of us. Uh, that's what they're doing. They're retreating and still managing to get some decent hits. So I might go ahead and uh, accept uh, potentially a ceasefire. Although, as you can see, we're getting some amazing shots on distant vehicles over here. You know, over time, we are going to end up getting all of them, even at a distance. I don't know, guys. Oh my goodness, what happened here? Oh my, I don't think I've ever seen that before. So apparently he um, went into some sort of little tiny uh, body of water here, a watering hole or something, um, got stuck, and now he's on fire. That is a tank in an awful situation there. I love it, guys. It's of course, MPLA tank there, and wait a minute. Actually got some units that are retreating. I guess they've had enough, even though we're winning in an overwhelming fashion here. Yeah, not everybody can take it. I mean, it's been a long and nasty battle. And many of these South African troops have not seen battle yet. This is their first fight. So I can understand, um, you know, their fear. Have to address that discipline issue a little later, folks. All right, starting to spot a few uh, infantry units, of course. No surprise there. They're not all dead. Yep, still some infantry were right there. Unbelievable. I mean, it's incredible how many of these guys were just left behind. When you are retreating this quickly, you know, you're going to leave some men behind. There's just no way around that. Nice. Grenade took out this guy. We've even got some of our men firing directly at them. Good shooting. Another vehicle lost. As you can see, we're losing a lot of vehicles on this advance. Um, I think we'll go ahead and accept that ceasefire. And, of course, I did that assuming that we keep the village point. I do believe we keep it. But you never know with the Graviteam um, battle system uh, how it's going to come out. <laughs> could come out as a victory. Could come out as a defeat. Uh, only time will tell. Nice. A few more shots there on the enemy. Another vehicle lost, so I'm, I'm glad we took the ceasefire here. Again, just too many rattles lost for the sake of, of getting a few stragglers. Um, when, as you can see, just looking at this place, we have taken out so many uh, of their vehicles already. There's no reason to keep on going. Uh, we could just wait for the next battle. South African liberation looks like this. <laughs> it's not so good for the people in the village. But, you know, it is what it is. Oh, look at that. Ooh, we got a tow missile here. I'm not going to be using it for this battle. But nonetheless, guys, what a hell of a fight. And if you guys like this first part of our campaign, please make sure to let us know by hitting that comment or hitting that like button and also hitting that comment button. Uh, definitely make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel, guys. This is a strategy channel. We can use all of the viewers we can get. It really, really helps. Uh, also, subscribe to our Twitch channel down below uh, to catch our streams. All right, here we go. The final tally. What's it going to be? 
Minor victory. I'll take it. It looks like we had 87 killed on our side, guys. 65 heavily wounded. Um, but only, well, zero missing. Five missing from the enemy, which means we've taken five prisoners. 63 killed and 107 heavily wounded. So they technically took more casualties, but not as many killed. Um, as you can see here, also vehicles destroyed on both sides. Yeah, we lost a lot of vehicles. Um, so did the enemy. Um, but, you know, we killed 26. They killed 12 of ours, technically 15. It's tough either way, but I do see that as a victory. Now, of course, we want to move on to the operations map and see what's coming next. All right, folks, so this is what it looks like now. Um, and, of course, we've got to decide what to do next. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below. As you can see, we are getting very close to that objective point to try and beat the MPLA here in Operation Modular. But I want your feedback. Make sure to let me know down below, guys. And thank you so much for watching.